Revolution Islamic Center. I don't know if people here know, and I'm not sure if you're going to refer to it, but I, you may have seen the news. Yesterday, the center was in the news in BBC and ITV Today. Um, <coughs> one of the people who've gone out to fight in Syria, a young woman, Khatija, has used the mosque as a congregant. I was there on Friday at the mosque giving out leaflets for today's meeting, and I met a journalist from the Associated Press who was there trying to find out if everyone, anyone there knew Khadija. I'm worried, and I hope that, again, everyone here who's from Lewisham will be worried, because what's happening is that that centre, our Lewisham centre, is now going to be labelled a terrorist mosque. We know what the media does. We know what the EDL does. We know they've come there before. We need to think about how we are going to support our local communities and keep our community uh, cohesion going and how we can stop any attacks on our local mosque and our uh, Muslims in our community. It is a frightening time. Today the, the university were frightened about security because of the media press. I was thinking will the EDL be here. So it is frightening and I hope that again you all will help us look at how we can work together with the mosque to ensure that things don't get out of hand. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Zilu Rahman. Um, I'm from the Lucian Islamic Centre, as uh, Mina uh, has stated. Um, just to uh, deal with the uh, firstly, thank you all for attending this evening, and uh, we thank the organisers for arranging this event and, and in particularly for inviting uh, Lucian Islamic Centre to be a part of this. Um, if I could just deal with perhaps the point that Amina raised uh, just a short while ago in relation to the recent events uh, that, that have taken place. I mean, it's, it's rather unfortunate that time and time again that as soon as an individual happens to commit a crime uh, that happens to be uh, perhaps uh, someone who is from the London Borough of Lewisham and happens to be Muslim, that they automatically correlate and, 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 and connect Lewisham Islamic Centre uh, to those crimes, even though we've made it, we have made it clear that uh, the centre in no way condone the, uh, the the real vile tweet that had gone out by uh, Khadija there. He, he was a, a member of, of, of London Borough of Lewisham, and we've said it to the journalists that contact us many times. We've say we've said that in the same way she perhaps attended the Lewisham Islamic Centre it's very likely that she also attended supermarkets, perhaps local Tesco <laughs> or local Sainsbury's. Will you be inquiring, you know, will your inquiries be going to them and asking them, oh, did she buy a chicken here or did she buy a soup store? And it's as ludicrous as that, but unfortunately, uh, this is what the uh, centre has to, has to put up with. And, and, and we would hope that uh, in the same way as uh, the, uh, the centre, again, uh, was misrepresented in the media, again, following the death of uh, Lou Rigby, uh, and even though the murders, even though the murders took place in a neighbouring borough, and the uh, murders didn't actually live in the London Borough of Lewisham, and lived in Greenwich, for some reason, again, uh, the Lewisham Islamic Centre uh, was uh, the focus of, of, of the attention. And, and there was, as, as Amina mentioned, there was, uh, the BNP had planned to march to uh, the mosque for the first time they planned to march in Lewisham since the 70s where they got a real bloody nose. Uh, and, and of course it was because of the uh, support that we received from the, uh, from, from the community, uh, from various <laughs> different faith communities and, 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 and from the trade unions and so on, that we were able to uh, put up a counter protest and as a result of that uh, we were able to uh, stop the uh, march from uh, taking effect. Uh, in, to, in relation to today's uh, event, um, I mean, the speakers before me have, have spoken, um, you know, raised some very valid points, and, and, and I'm keen not to, to go over the, the, the same points that they've discussed. I've therefore decided to speak about my experiences uh, having travelled to Gaza uh, a few years ago, um, and I thought I'd share, share my experiences with you. When I, when I, I travelled to Gaza, Gaza as part of a, uh, a convoy, an interpal convoy that had been there in 2012 after the uh, war that had taken place there or the massacre that had taken <coughs> place there after November in 2012. Uh, before I, 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 I travelled there, um, I, was, I was aware of the horrors of the people living there, 
uh, that they have the most agonizing of, of, of nightmares. Um, of course, we know that their strip of land has been stolen from them. Uh, we know that they're imprisoned uh, in, in a strip of land which is approximately 25 miles long, effectively the London Marathon. Um, that their seas are hounded by the Israeli Navy. Their skies are polluted by murderous drones and F-16s. That the streets are pierced with bullets. The homes are ripped apart uh, by rockets and peaceful nights are occupied by vicious bombings and of course minds invaded by trauma. For many unfortunately in Gaza, uh, spending time with their loved ones uh, is effectively limited to picture frames and a visit to the graveyard. In spite of this however, you find there are people who always embrace you uh, with a smile even though you can see and feel the pain when looking in their eyes. You find the people there that are so selfless uh, at, their, at their own expense. And even when we were visiting families uh, that were poor and destitute uh, and that were affected by the recent bombings at that time, they would often direct us to other nearby families saying, actually, they're in worse condition than we are. Um, you find the people there that are proud uh, and do not want handouts and uh, uh, want to graft and build their own struggle and their own destiny. You find the people there that are truly fearless. I mean, we, the night times were pretty scary because it was complete darkness and you'd hear the drones, which are really um, quite, quite loud and thunderous and, and often you'd find F-16 just flying across. And this was at a time where, uh, you know, there was meant to be a ceasefire. And of course, because we're not used to it, it's quite frightening for us, but you'd find them saying to us, look, you know, what have you got to be afraid of? If you want to go to sleep, go to sleep. If you want to go out and have a good time, you go out and have a good time. Don't let these, uh, you know, don't let the planes and the drones put you off. <laughs> you find the people that have an unbreakable will. And what struck me was that even if the whole world abandons them, uh, and, and, and as the whole world has indeed abandoned them since the inception of the uh, state of Israel, that they will continue to struggle um, for their freedom and they will continue to struggle to the last man, to the last woman, and indeed to the last child. They are simple, humble, and a grateful people. I met a man there, who, uh, a police officer in fact, in the Rafa crossings, and he made me take uh, his telephone number and with a view to just simply say, when it's just Eid or Ramadan, on special occasions, can you please just text me so that I know I know another person from another part of the world. Um, Unfortunately, I've since lost numbers on my phone, and it's rather unfortunate that I have lost his uh, lost contact with him. Uh, we met a family who, had, uh, at that time, uh, had, had devastated by the recent bombings uh, by the Israelis, and there was a gaping hole uh, in the ceiling. The mother of the house, who had just recently been rid widowed as a result of the war, um, had uh, five children, and she was actually crying and. We thought that she was perhaps crying because of the uh, because of the, uh, the, the, the the incident which has befallen her. But, but in, rather, what she was crying about was that she didn't. There was nowhere for us to sit in the house because it was completely uh, rubble, and she had no food to, to serve us. Uh, and this was the reason uh, why she was in fact crying. Um, what astonished me to see there was that uh, amongst all the rubble, there was actually uh, five stars standard hotels, and, and, and I was a bit shocked, thinking, well, how, is, how does this work? Uh, so I did inquire uh, with, our, with our guide, and, and, and what, they, what they said was quite astonishing. What they effectively were saying was that because uh, the people in Gaza, uh, they, they have no means to travel by land, air, or sea, um, that they build these uh, hotels, these five-star standard hotels, as a means of escape for their people. So, for example, at times, when someone's getting married, you'll find that uh, they'll use one of the hotels perhaps for the wedding events. And the idea of a, of, a, of a honeymoon for the couple would be to go and check in at one of those other hotels. And, and they were saying it's, it's effectively a means of providing holiday for their, for their uh, people in their own land. Um, and you know, cause they were saying psychologically, they have to do this because otherwise uh, they will lose uh, their will and, and, and they will lose their minds. Um, the streets of Gaza are filled with uh, posters of, of, of martyrs uh, that, that have been killed and have fallen in, 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 in recent wars. 
Uh, what did surprise me, however, was in one of, on one of our visits to one of the hospitals. And again, we saw these posters uh, in the hospitals as well. And we inquired with the doctors and said, Look, we can understand why there's posters in the streets and on the roads, but why is it that they also appear in, inside the hospitals? And, and the doctor's response was quite profound. What he said was that, well, these are uh, colleagues, uh, former colleagues that, that have been lost also in the war. And he said that, um, you know, in, in, in Gaza, everyone is a freedom fighter. Every single person is a freedom fighter. He said, don't believe the news that those that are resisting are only those that have no life, that are thugs or criminals. He said, no, that's not the case. Every single person living in Gaza uh, is part of the resistance. Um, and I uh, just wanted to say, I mean, when we, when we, when we see uh, what's happening in, 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 in Palestine, and has been the case for, uh, for, for, for many years, we see much uh, double standards uh, that taking place. Um, and, you know, I, I was really surprised to uh, hear, well, it's not surprising, but to hear both um, Obama and David Cameron uh, speak in relation to the recent events that have taken place in Iraq and the people, the, um, the, the, the uh, Yazidis that have taken, in terms of the plight of the Yazidis. And what they were saying was that uh, we must go there to help the plight of the Yazidis. And of course, rightly so. But <coughs> what they were saying was that because in case a genocide takes place, and this was despite the fact that at that moment in time, you know, it was approaching 2,000 people uh, that, that had been massacred in, in, in Gaza, and yet there was no such response uh, in relation to that. And again, you know, we've seen with the uh, recent and gruesome and barbaric um, uh, beheading of, of the innocent James Foley uh, that, that has taken place in, in, in Iraq. And, but again, I, I ask the question, you know, is the image of uh, James Foley's death, is it more gruesome than watching or seeing some of the pictures that have come out from the recent conflict in Gaza of children's, I'm sure you've all seen it, of children's heads, uh, you know, the, the skulls uh, cracked open, allowing the viewer to have a, a hollow look through the shell of, of, of the child's uh, head while the father embraces his child for the, for the final time? Is it more gruesome than this? Is it any more gruesome than watching images of children and, and women being dragged out from under the rubble? Uh, is this how desensitized we've become that some deaths unfortunately are seen as more newsworthy than others? And we must stand against this hierarchy of deaths that we see being played out by the media and that we, we must understand that the loss of innocent lives, uh, regardless of, of, of who it is, and, and, and regardless of where it's carried out by uh, rogue criminal gangs or groups or by nation states, is unacceptable. Um, and we've seen that, and we've heard uh, this evening that uh, I've seen the reports on, on various Arab news that uh, this afternoon and early this evening that there's been a long-term ceasefire uh, that has been reached by Gaza and, and the State of Israel. I'm not sure about the veracity of truth of that as yet, but we hope that it is true. But regardless of, of, of whether there is a, a long-term ceasefire, and we, and we hope there is for, for, for the, uh, the sake of the Palestinians, our boycotting and our spreading of awareness of the apartheid Israeli state uh, should, not, should not slow down and must continue. Um, the massacres that have taken place recently uh, have opened eyes around the world, and more so, I think, and I believe, than in other, on other occasions in the other, other wars. And we must ensure that those eyes never shut again, because, uh, unfortunately, some innocent Palestinian, Palestinian children's eyes will not be opened again. Um, and this is the largest global uh, movement of non-violent uh, resistance. Uh, the world has, has, has ever seen, and, and as, as John and, and Leah mentioned earlier, that you know, I think that we've had the largest uh, numbers of people assembled uh, for this cause, even though the media, the BBC, will probably say it was only 100 people. Um, but but we'll, we'll, we'll leave BBC to continue uh, saying what it does. Uh, and we, we can't afford to let uh, the interest in this uh, wane or fade away. We must continue uh, this momentum, uh, despite, even if uh, it's out the news, even if, if there is, uh, if there is a, a ceasefire is reached, uh, we must all, all pull together 
um, and, and, and continue uh, what we are doing. Uh, thank you very much.